So one of the things that makes drawing our furry, crittery, four-legged friends just a little bit more difficult uh, is that they have such a wonderful variation of patterns and different markings, which tend to, uh, in addition to the fur, really obscure the shapes, which is, you know, they're little guys. They're out in nature. They want the camouflage. It's perfect for them, but it's really hard for artists. It makes it, it makes it a little difficult to, you know, see what's going on. So when you go ahead and break down the shapes underneath, what you end up doing is kind of allowing yourself to see beyond the things obscuring the shape. And it makes it a lot easier to break it down, digest the anatomy, and then draw it yourself that, you know, you can go from something that looks like a trash Dorito to maybe something that ends up being a little more on the cute little guy side. You know, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> My hand was really hurting. <laughs> Um, all right. I'm excited. I wanted to do this last week, but I hurt my hand. So I'll move my, my practice guys down here and we'll start over. Oh, wait, I've selected, he, he, he needs to stay put. Let's deselect that layer. All right, there we go. Awesome possum or awesome raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> different critter this time. We should do possums next time though. They're fun. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go back over to this little guy and I will not so smoothly be able to demonstrate, but I'm gonna try anyways, cause now I've ruined it. I already practiced it. I can't draw it before I've done it cause I already drew it. You know what, let's go move to a different one then. If I already drew those guys, let's start with uh. Let's let's do let's do it fresh. We'll go we'll we'll start with you. You're you're a cute little guy. Alright, so I changed my hotkeys. I changed my hotkeys. Don't stay up till 3 a.m. changing your hotkeys around, kids. Actually, I made them way more efficient. I just have to get used to it, so. Growing pains. <laughs> That's all. So we're gonna take this layer and I'm gonna go ahead and Well, oh, right, we're going to draw an example first um all right so i've already kind of drawn the other guys so this doesn't stand as well but i'm sure it'll still bear to demonstrate so we've kind of got a circle he's a blobby guy we'll, we'll start there all right so i've drawn the, the beginning of an eclipse and I'm just gonna try to break out. He's got sort of rounded nose. And then we've got up into a triangular shape. So this is trying to see what the heck is going on with all the other noise of his markings and his fur. Visually, I feel very confused. <laughs> fine. At least I already practiced his face. I practiced his face. I was drawing his eyes way too high though. I probably still will. This will be fun to compare. All right. So this is kind of what I've got going for his face. I'll just give him some little eyebrows. All right, where are his feet? He's got one arm coming down from there. I think that's where his elbow is. And it kind of comes down, he's got his little foot. Is this right? <laughs> okay, the, uh, this is absolutely one of my favorite and one of the best ways to use tracing is just to like break down shapes when there's a lot of confusion going on. I don't know if this is right. I feel like I'm just applying cat cat anatomy logic to this. He looks <laughs> he looks so wrong. This is not I'm really struggling breaking the shapes down though. Like this is the worst uh 
Oh no, he's too triangular. So animals are very interesting to me because like <clears throat> the shapes involved and the shape language really sells the difference between uh, different critters. One of my other uh, first attempts looked very much so like a fox instead, but it's hard. Um, it's hard to see what stuff makes it what it's. <laughs> He's so wonky, but I feel like I'm confused over how much goes for his body, how much goes for his leg. Uh, there's a lot of visual noise going on, so we're gonna go ahead and reduce that visual noise by then going over this image and kind of giving ourselves a cheat sheet to go off of. Um, and so then when we try to draw our own version, we can reference the shapes that we've mapped out and it makes things a little bit easier. So he's kind of got a nose going here. He's got his little eyeballs here. And I'm gonna guarantee you, I still made his forehead way too small and put his eyes up uh, too high. <laughs> so, I think that kind of is mid. That doesn't help me. All right, so I'm gonna kind of do a guideline for his eyes. And then, all right, here, he's got his ears. He's got very rounded triangular ears. All right, and he comes down like this. I'm trying to guess the best I can from the way his fur goes, but here's his paw. And it goes up into his leg. So it's probably Hmm. I don't actually know what's going on in this front area. All right, so we'll do what we can and then try to see what the other leg might look like by seeing what this one looks like. So I'm gonna make sure that I kind of map out, this looks like the shoulders up here behind his head and this is like his elbow down to his wrist. Or is it the ankle to the toes? Looking up um, more direct anatomy references can be helpful. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with what I have on here. Um, this isn't an in-depth study on our little uh, trash friends here. I love them, they're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was originally going to do all of them today, Kian. Uh, however, my wrist is not up for the task. I, I bopped it pretty good last week. Um, and so we're doing enough to keep the rust off because, um, yeah, the, the draw every day cantrip? No. Mantra? Mantra. Cantrip? Brain! I've been playing way too much d, &D. The draw every day mantra is... <clears throat> it's less to do, I think, with... Uh, like, when I say draw every day, I don't mean that you have to draw every single day to get better. The more time you try to devote to improvement, the more improvement you're going to see. Um, so there is, okay, see, we can match these two pieces. That's a piece. And then this is like his upper arm to shoulder. So 
think that is right. I think that's what we're looking at. Um, oh no, I forgot what I was talking about because that, that light bulb clicked. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> we're just doing one of them today. We're going to keep it bite-sized. All right, so let's see if my, let's see if my second go at this will be any better now that I've given myself a little bit of a guideline for what's going on. Oops. Let's do, do, do. I changed my hotkeys. Can I even do that anymore? What? Uh oh. Oh no, I actually got rid of something I need. All right, I'll do that later then. Um, <laughs> I made it so I can't select my brush size. That's goofy. All right, um. That's fine. I figured I probably messed or forgot some stuff. Messed up or forgot some stuff. Uh, and I wasn't gonna figure it out until I got to draw enough and in the flow to be like, huh, I can't do this thing. And sure enough, we did. So I'll watch my stream through later and when I hear that, I'll go fix it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm trying to see if I can work with what I drew and try to get something that makes more sense than what I did the first time. And so far, I feel like this is a bit more structured and a bit more on point. <laughs> and I can see like how low on his head it is, his ears really should be going. We'll see, maybe I overcompensate. Oh, maybe I put them too low this time, we'll see. I think they're too low this time. <laughs> it's fun. I like, I have not drawn too many raccoons. Some of the other um, suggestions are also good for multiple reasons, but I thought these guys were just like fun shape. They have got a very distracting pattern. So it was a good one to do a, a little breakdown on. Um, and something that I'm not as familiar with, so it's a learning experience for me as well. Uh, and, and it's okay to not be perfectly amazing at something the first time you try drawing it. And uh, I think if you're, if you're not failing, you're not trying new things. So um, I'm going to draw a couple of bad ones that don't look how I wish they did. And that's just part of the process. So if I accept that and I let some of the bad art happen as I draw more, they're going to look better. Obviously, this one looks much better than either of my attempts have been, but... My second attempt is still better than my first attempt, and if I drew it a third time, it would, again, be that much better because I've done it again, and practice really helps. Um, ah, uh, yes, my rant about drawing every day. I think it's less about just making sure that you draw every day and more about keeping your hand-eye coordination up. Uh, cause like right now I can already feel that my hand is not happy. I'm not going to be able to draw much longer. So we're going to go as long as I feel like it is not going to be hurting my wrist or my, well, I guess it's more my thumb, but the way where my thumb hurts is in my wrist. If that makes sense. Um, I think I hyper extended my thumb backwards. So I don't want to get out of practice so that when I do try to do commission work, 
um, I will be frustrated and rusty. So this is a good little exercise to make sure that I stay on point and I get to learn something new. I've been extremely bored. I've been, I finished a YouTube video. <laughs> yes, that one. Next stream I miss is gonna be replaced with the Nightmare Commission stories. It's ready to go. So now, Instead of no stream, you'll have something new to watch, and we'll see how that goes. There's something else I've additionally almost got ready. It is, I'm going stir crazy not being able to make anything. Um, and editing videos is something where I've been able to kind of put some of that, um, sort of into my, my creative energy into a different slot, so to speak. Cause, oh. I've been watching YouTube tutorials. I'm like, how do I do this? How do I learn to zoom? How do I pan? Uh, basically relearning all the effects I previously knew. Um, how to utilize in... What is he? The uh, previous... Pre pre bleh, we broke. <clears throat> the previous effects that I knew how to utilize in a uh, shortcut. So I've been learning how to use uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is a much more professional level program and it's <sighs> taken some digesting and uh, many tutorials. I would say I spent just about seven hours of learning on YouTube, looking through multiple tutorials just to learn how to do the same thing I could already do in Shotcut in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, but now I also can learn, like I've learned, I can do a lot more <laughs> and a lot of stuff that I could do before um, it's a lot more streamlined in DaVinci Resolve than it was in my other editing program. So it's been, uh, a lot of bulk learning, um, out of the gate up front, but the, uh, mileage that I'm going to get for everything that I learned is going to be worth it. So... From this point on, my goal is to have some videos ready to go. So if I do miss a stream, there's some goodies to watch. We'll see how that goes, but I'm trying. You learn to use Dis DaVinci Resolve a couple years back when you wanted to try videos. It's a funky program. You're always spoiled for choice with option. Uh, yeah, so I would say something like... Uh, Shotcut, which is, I believe, an open source software. Um, it was good because it was a lot easier to learn initially. Um, but when I understood that I liked making videos and that I wanted to keep doing it, it was, I probably should have switched to DaVinci Resolve a lot sooner. Um, but I was scared to learn a new program, so I stuck with the more simple program till I felt like I was comfortable in my editing skills and was ready for, you know, okay, I know what I like for my videos, so let me go ahead and, you know, try and uh, adjust. I'm, I'm ready for the next difficulty level, you know. Um, I can handle what was on my plate. Let's, let's grow a little bit and... It took me, I think my last video upload was about five months ago. Um, so I've had a lot of stuff go on in my personal life as well, but I've kind of always in the background when I've had the time been, been pushing at editing and getting the audio done. And um, I actually have a second video that's almost done as well but I decided to change course with what I was doing and I'm going to keep the audio and just sub out the, um, uh, I'm going to keep the audio and sub out the other, uh, footage with something else I think is more suitable. I cannot figure out what's going on. 
but I still feel like this one's closer than the other one. Why are they such wonky little shapes? This should be shorter? All right, hold on. I want to see how close this is. Do, do, do. How far off am I? It's like, okay, I don't want to trace the guy, yeah? This is, <laughs> this is why when you can tell somebody trace something, you can tell that they trace something. Oh shit, I'm pretty close actually. I made his tail too big. What is going on here? Hold on, let me make him a different color. So I'm close. Holy shit, look at that. I like nailed the body shape. Hey. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Um, what is making noise? Where are you? Hush. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to make him um, let's make him a blue so we can see what my guy is versus my under sketch, which I will leave as red. Um, so also this is when you see people compare stuff and they go, oh, this was traced. Uh, it's because you can see when everything, when multiple instances overlap exactly, it's very easy to tell. Oh no, I did them on the same, what? Oh, because I moved that. Oh, 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 easy. Okay. We'll do a control X, control Z. Do, do, do. There we go. We'll put him on his own layer. That'll help a ton. All right, so let's do this. We do this. All right, and then we see how close I got. Okay. I did really well. <laughs> so I made the tail a little bit too big. Um, and it looks like I also made it. Wow. I did pretty well. The body shape is pretty close. The front leg is a bit too big and needs to be brought up a little bit tighter in. I made the tail too large, but the shape is roughly the same. Uh, wow. See, his shape looks so wrong, but I managed to get it looking pretty close. And it's really frustrating that stuff doesn't always... Like, animals are such weird little guys. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make the few changes that I feel like... Um bring this in closer and then add I think essentially what's missing to make him feel right is a little bit of fluff so the ears were roughly fine just want to make his lower face a bit bigger I think is what and then I love this little warp tool because I'm just going to take this and then hit the mesh transform. And then this should let me think both of these needed to move up and over. <clears throat> so it's wonky. That's kind of how he looks. So now let me see if I go and I add some of the floofy shapes. Do we get something here that looks more like what we have there? <laughs> so we got the eyeballs. We've got his ears. Now this is still making an image that is directly derived from this one. So this is still in the realm of something I would only use for study. Um, there is merch in my store uh, with an otter on it. And I did basically the same process. You can act actually, it was a live stream too. So if you wanted to see that, you could. I'll, uh, I'll link it post stream. Uh, but I went through the same process of essentially trying to work out the anatomy. And then when I had figured that all out, I went ahead 
and uh, drew my own otter entirely. And it was from the shapes and everything I had learned to draw, but it was none of the otters that I had looked at. It was it, like, once you understand how they're built, you can kind of make your own. It's like when you draw a character for the first few times. Um, if I get a reference of a character that's at a three-quarter angle, I usually find myself drawing them for the first time at a three-quarter angle because I wrap my, like, my brain around the, uh the shape and the hair and the style. But if I draw a character multiple, multiple times, I'll get to a point where I can draw them at any angle doing multiple things because I understand what shapes they're built out of. Therefore, I understand at different angles what those shapes do. You build a, a library, you build a map, uh, and then you go off-roading. <laughs> Um, why does he so chunky? I love him. <laughs> this is so funny. This is not how I thought he'd look at all either. Like, it's so interesting. Uh, it's still not perfect. There's still some, um, <laughs> there's still some, some trial and error going on here. But that's where I'd like to point out, like, this is, this is number one. This is the first one I drew, it's just a triangle. And then I kind of started making it over to these guys, and I started with the face off of this one. So my second attempt, and my third attempt, uh, this is my fourth attempt, and this is my fifth attempt. I don't normally draw, uh, I don't think I have any raccoon characters. No, I don't think I've had the, uh, the opportunity. The closest I can think is if I drew Retsuko. Huh. But, uh, yeah. I mostly draw what I get commissioned to draw, and let's be real, it's kobolds. <laughs> uh. One, hello, hello. Looks like you should have a six pack, absolutely. Uh. Oh. Like the he's <laughs> Hold on. Oh, let me give him my Captain America shield too. Trash Panda is drawn by Rob Liefeld. Oh, people, people will always put down his, his art, and I, I see why the points are valid. I, however, it is also valid when people are like, well, if he can get a job, then so can I. Like, yes. I mean, it's not really great to put down another artist to lift yourself up, but realistically, if at that skill he was able to get a job because he was persistent and drew and finished the work... Uh, then he kept getting jobs. I don't know his whole history. Um, I just know that a lot of, <laughs> a lot of jokes in the art industry around, uh, the fact that he would hide feet because he couldn't draw them. And I'm just like, yeah, that, I mean, it's kind of relatable though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I had my giggles. Uh, <laughs> I just want to paint him like that, though. Oh, no. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, so let's try another one. So I drew, I drew the frame for this guy. Let's go ahead and try to practice. We'll get, we'll get maybe one more in. My, my, my wrist is really hurting, so I don't want to push it too hard. So instead of starting the other one, we'll work with the one I already have going. Cause I think this will be the last one I can try to cover before I do my last drawing. <clears throat> Which will be taking all of these and trying to draw something. What do, what do you guys want to see him doing? We'll see how much my hand strength can can handle. Um, but if you have a suggestion, I'd like to hear it. Except for you, Kian. <laughs> that sounded so mean. But this was this was their suggestion, so you you already got your say in the matter. <laughs> and we played D and D together, so I get to I get to poke a little bit. I'm not everyone's <laughs> just like, oh wow, the Scots is a Scots is a jerk. No, I promise I'm not. Uh, I just I felt I felt very. Um, I was going to try to do all of them, but that that was too ambitious. Uh, so I went ahead for the first comment on the post and we'll work through that. So I kind of see that this is making a diamond shape here. Oh, I don't have the hand up, so hopefully. So he's kind of got like a diamond shape to him. Um, and I'm going to kind of try to get that same thing going here and start that as my base shape because his head's nestled within that. Do, do, do. All right. So, <laughs> um, hmm. What? What would he be doing? The only thing I've got, I just want to draw him in a trash can. It looks like he should have a six pack. You know what? Wait. Let's make him ripped. Here, get some nipples too. There. Male presenting nipples. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Malicious compliance. All right. <sighs> okay. Put the gremlin mode away. Back to teaching mode. <laughs> Bear witness. <laughs> For I am the art gremlin. If you're not having a good time, you're not doing it right. And I think sometimes having a good laugh can break the break the frustration loop. Uh <laughs> I hope my gate worked. I really hope that wasn't too loud. Gremlin mode all night. I try to save that for the game streams and not so much the tutorial streams. So if you want more of that mode, definitely follow me on Twitch. Uh, the Scuts Butts on Twitch. That's the time to plug it. <laughs> uh, I've had my caffeine today. So... I'm going to try to stick with going a bit more cartoony on this one. Am I putting his... I think I put his eyes too high again. I do this every time. And his ears are too big. All right.
This is this is fun. It's fun to try to. <laughs> I laugh a lot when stuff is coming out. I could get really frustrated, but instead I just kind of laugh. I'm like, it kind of looks like a ditto, and like I'm not trying to be self deprecating with that kind of humor like it's just kind of funny sometimes stuff doesn't come out how you want it to now he's angry we got an angry ditto uh but it's <laughs> it's part of the process that sometimes stuff looks goofy or not quite how you mean it to and accepting it with a little bit of light-hearted flavor instead of getting upset it can help get past the stage because often you just need more practice and if I drew 20 or 30 of these guys by number 30 he'd be pretty on point uh, I think it's why some of the best um, quote-unquote like popular artists and blogs they they get like on fixation stints where they draw something and they draw a lot of it uh, and one of the reasons that it can work is because they get really good at drawing that one thing. So the lines become sort of effortless. And that's, I think, where a lot of the appeal comes in, is when the lines look effortless. It makes it look um, mysterious in a way. Because it's so elusive for so many people that sketches that just look... It's so carefree, but still like nail the form or the volume. It's its own impressive feat. And I think that a lot of folks want to achieve that, but that comes through a lot of repetition and practice, uh, which is why you see someone hyper-focusing on Carlac get, you know, a ton of follows because they're drawing Carlac really well because they've drawn her you know, 30, 40 times now. <laughs> or they just draw her one time really, really well. <laughs> but it's also just a luck of stuff. Like, I think one of the reasons I'm not more popular is because I don't draw a ton of fan art. Case in point, the eclipse just happened. Uh, and on my other accounts, I shared something where it's Luna and Celestia. It's, it's fan art and so what happens that that got way more traction than a lot of my other stuff but what I draw is a lot of OCs and commission art so it tends to get less traction than the fan art but I tend to have more customers who would like my work even though my socials have smaller numbers of likes because I do custom art, the people who like my art are people interested in custom art, if that makes sense. Whereas if all I did was produce fan art, people would be interested in watching me draw pictures of Luna and not getting uh, art from me as much. Whereas a lot of my commission base is people who want to get their, their art drawn. They don't just want to appreciate OCs or just appreciate like art of their favorite character from Baldur's Gate uh, they actively would like to have their characters drawn um, and that's sort of why my audience is small but I don't mind because I feel like I've cultivated people who actually have uh, a desire for my art uh, and to see their characters drawn in my style and I think that that's Cool as heck. It hit me that I am a professional illustrator. That I, I take commissions and I, I freelance work at the direction of another person. Uh, a freelance artist... A, a, a freelance illustrator is a freelance artist, but not all artists are illustrators. <laughs> See, look at that. This guy looks so much better already. I got his face down... And I, I just clearly have a much better understanding of what's going on by the last one here. I don't know what's going on with this foot, though. We'll pretend that I care. <laughs> I do care. That's for another tutorial when I have the hand strength. 
we'll see what's going on. But I can kind of infer his tail goes down here and then we have the log or the tree branch kind of go down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in because I can. But I don't even need to try to check and see how this one overlays because I feel like this one reads right. I feel like he looks pretty good and I'm happy. And I feel like I understand, I understand the shapes a little bit better. Maybe I don't understand the shapes as well as I think I do, but I'm going to go ahead with confidence because you know what? Uh, he's number one, two, wait, one is the Dorito. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is, this is number seven before I am drawing anything. So I haven't even got to number 10, but <laughs> that was the hope is to make it to 10. Um, what do we want to draw him doing? Hmm. I mean, I think I'm just going to draw him sitting here, but I think I know. All right, let's see. So I want his, what layer am I on? Let's start a new layer, Scuds. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's not stack stuff. I'm going to draw over stuff and be sad. All right. New layer. Um, so I'm going to kind of keep his head roughly at the angle that I've drawn already. So a three quarters turn. I didn't do the face on one, but if I did want to try, I do have an example there. Uh, and I think that that's, ooh, evil scheme. That's a good idea. Um, the, uh, oh no, I'm, I was going to say, if you have to go and grab other references, you can, uh, cause this is a good straightforward reference. Um, it kind of shows the front paws, but I don't actually have any good uh, demos of the back paw, except for that peak there where they're very finger-like, uh, and the end of those ones splayed there. So they look similar to the front paws. Like, why are these sideways? How is he doing that? Like, his toes are sideways. What, what your foot do? I don't know. But... If I need to find out, I will get a different reference. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the way you do this. You get a get a grasp, you get your idea, fill in what you can, and then go find refs for the stuff that you can't. Uh, give me just a moment. I need to have some liquid here. <laughs> so let's think about the scheming raccoon evil evil plan what's his evil plan i need the angle here this is this is you know this is what makes a commission you can draw somebody standing there you can draw somebody sitting there or you can draw somebody sitting there thinking about the ultimate burrito heist maybe there's something better than a burrito heist but what what is he going for just watched I don't know I'm trying to think uh I don't know hmm evil schemey <sighs> there's a there's a little lock on my trash can how is he going to get in it now All right. Mm. 
So he's got kind of triangular shoulders, right? We'll see. All right, so we're gonna have him sitting down. He's got a weird blobby shape. There's gotta be an image of them holding something. Always go grab more references if you need. Um, do, 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 holding something? Da, 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 da. Why's he got peanut butter? He's taking off with a jar of peanut butter. I mean, I suppose. Um, oh god, that's cute. Okay. Okay, this one's also cute. Oh no. Fine, I have to share this. Even if it's just the small one. It's very small. That's fine. How's the resolution though? Eh, good enough for demonstration. He's scream. <laughs> this is just cute. Um, oh no. <laughs> oh, they're so scrunkly. Um, oh, here's one where they're sitting. So I'm thinking something kind of like this for the way they sit in. Maybe. But it gives me an idea. And then, ah. Uh, I mean, he is holding something in front of him. So it kind of shows me how his shoulder structure goes. Oh my, no. Okay, at least uh, I guess it's a pet. There's a lady kissing a raccoon. I'm like, that's, I, that's, I, I love wildlife, but that is a step too far. And then I saw he had a collar on. So I'm assuming it was a pet, which is I guess better, but I don't know. I don't think they're really supposed to be pets. Doop, doop, doop. So we've got... We want an evil scheming. All right. I'm gonna draw a doodle and then I am going to turn my doodle into Trash Panda. Cause I want him to be like doing the, I'm like thinking like the Mr. <laughs> the Mr. Burns hand rub almost. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. My thumb is really starting to hurt, so I feel like I get the idea uh, of the shapes we're trying to apply here, but the application is getting harder the longer we go. <laughs> So I'm trying to draw a really, 
really low pressure. We will see, this might not, we might have to start a drawing and finish it. I really don't wanna do that, but I wanna hurt my wrist even less. <laughs> if it's sore, it's sore, we're done. Um, what can we do? Oh, he just looks like a Pikachu now. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm -hmm. <laughs> God, my poor brain. I'm like, just give him abs and male presenting nipples. I'm like, why? Why are we here today? Because I haven't been streaming in a week. I, I am, I am, I've been bored. It's why I do stuff. I like to keep myself entertained. I like to make things. I like to make art. All right. Well, I'm gonna say, if I can get this to apply to a cartoony style, that this might even be one step better than I was ready for. Um, because it, if I can break it down into a cartoony style and it looks like he's still what he's supposed to be, then I feel like I've done a pretty good job of uh, translating and explaining the shapes of the critter today. And since my hand hurts more than uh, than I was expecting, we will go with the try that we have today. And maybe, maybe uh, next time I stream, I can try to do a round two on this guy and give him uh, give him the second like brush up he deserves. It depends on how good this kind of goes. We'll see. I guess he's turning into like a little anthro cartoony guy. That's fine. We're going with what's here. Um, sometimes I have an idea of what I want to draw in my head. And sometimes what comes out on the paper is very different. And I make a conscious choice to pivot away from my original idea uh, and just go with what's on the paper uh, because it's already what's coming out. And if I really, really want to, um, I'll allow myself to like, just put that sketch, like if it's digital or if it's on paper, I'll start a new layer, I'll grab a new piece of paper and I'll leave the one that was working, even if it's not what I wanted. And I'll try and do what I wanted again. And then at least it's a fallback. And sometimes I'd rather go with what was coming out and take getting, being productive uh, than struggling with something not looking quite right. Um, and just kind of having a non-productive battle. Uh, some days you're just not gonna win. Um, maybe you need more reference materials. Maybe your head's just not in the game. Uh, maybe you've drawn it so much you're just struggling to even um, keep working on it, you know? Like, you can't see the forest through the trees. And I've definitely had those days before. I feel like his tail should be behind him. Why does he remind me? What is he, he, um, um, oh no. The new Capenna set of Magic the Gathering had um, the one cards with the little, the, the little, little guys. Oh no. Please tell me, Keon, oh, whisperer of magic cards, you know what ones I'm talking about. They're so cute. It's one of my favorite cards, even though it's literally just, it's just like three raccoons on a trash can. <laughs> I'm like, I love them. Can I make a con commander deck around this? I don't think it makes any sense, but you know. Uh, I love that there's magic cards of literally everything. I was like, I got, I got sucked in because they have unicorns. <laughs> All 
All right, so we've got our f little fella here. Um, I think that this is what I don't like. Whoa, what did, why did I zoom in? Smuggler's share, there we go. <laughs> Can we name him? Yeah, I don't see why not. The little guy hanging out of the bin is so cute. It cracks me up that you call it a bin and not a trash can. In the bin. Gonna... Is he rubbish? <laughs> Sorry, I have a bunch of British friends and we find the funny little differences in lingo all the time and it's really interesting. We'll be playing a game or talking about something and all of a sudden we realize that in America we call it like a swimsuit or a bathing suit and over there they call it a swimming costume. And I'm like, huh, it makes sense, I guess. You're like changing into an outfit for an event, which is something that we would normally kind of call a costume. It's, it's just really funny. It cracks me up. <laughs> How do I pronounce that? Today we had a, on class a little theoretical bear that had a bakery and he was called I, 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 I want to go to Google to translate, but I want to, I'm, I'm, ah, okay, we're going. Joao? Not hear it over the music. I will have to find it later. I just wanted a pronunciation guide, but I'm just getting a bunch of um, the YouTube videos, and I'm like, I don't want to watch a YouTube video right now. But sure, we can name him, and I will learn how to say his name. All right. So they don't have really eyebrows it looks like more than anything the shape comes from their little face mask all right so I'm just gonna give him I'm not gonna worry about my sketch being clean my hand hurts that's fine we're just trying to we're, we're showing the principle here Mark where his eyes go. I'm skipping a lot of stuff. I feel like a lot of other artists draw a sketch phase between here and there. Um, I find I like my rough sketches a lot because they just flow and they're really nice. These guys have short fluffy furs. I'm doing it too, too floofy. Um, so I usually just kind of make the guide shapes for myself and then try to um, just have trust in what I was going to do as a sketch and kind of skip straight to doing it for line art. And I'm doing it really sloppy here because, well, I w I'll say it one last time, my hand hurts. <laughs> so we're going with what we got. Um, so let's see, to do his little mask up like this and then we'll have it come down. So it comes up from his nose, it comes down like that. So this will come up 
and I'm gonna give him a little mark here for his eyebrows because I'm gonna I'm gonna anthropomorphize. I'm gonna butcher that pronunciation. <laughs> I'm gonna anthropomorphize. You think that I would be able to pronounce that, but we're just gonna have trouble today. Um, I'm still gonna add human-like features so that he's expressive, which is what anthropomorphic basically refers to, is that something has been given humanoid features. I can say that version of the word, no problem. Anthropomorphic. That's fine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and that's all that matters. All right, so I'm gonna move his eyeball around until I like it. And I'm, I'm liking this, he's cute so far. All right, and then I'm gonna try to do a peek with another drop over here. So that's like his little eye, and then we're gonna bring his cheek uh, up and over because he's smiling real big. All right, so let's do... What? What is my brain picking at right now? What does this look like? Does this look like somebody? I don't know. Oh no, I always hate it. The <laughs> worst feeling as an artist when you're drawing something new and you're like, why does this look familiar? And you're like, oh no, <laughs> what already exists that I'm drawing? <laughs> Oh, it'll come to me. I know that there's like different anthropomorphic raccoons in media. And so I'm just trying to think like, I know there's not one in, um, uh, Robin Hood that I can think of. Not like the main cast. And that's not the vibes I'm getting from this. Ah. <sighs> It, it'll come to me, it'll it'll show up. All right, and then I'll do the same thing over here, give them a little bit of, I'm gonna, they're really angular, so I'm gonna stick with the angles. Um, all right, so now we got a little Dorito ear. I feel like I'm gonna try to swing it backwards a bit. Um, let's see if I can still do this. because I understand the shape of the ear. I'm kind of assuming the shape it's gonna be at the angle that it's at. Um, if you're trying to draw an ear at an angle that is different than any of the refs you have, find another ref. Um, I just don't feel like I need to. <laughs> and for the sake of time, um, we're gonna also go with what I've already got, so. I understand the shape of the ear. And this is good enough for what we're doing today. I think it definitely looks like what it should. Uh, and it demonstrates the thing really well. Also, please, for the love of God, with all the tech issues I've had today, uh, my audio is good, right? I shouldn't have realized this at the end of the stream, but I've had, um, I've been having audio issues again. I tried uninstalling Wavelink and reinstalling it, um, but I keep having drivers crash and having to restart a lot. So I've been trying to fix it. Uh, and as an unfortunate side effect, sometimes I can disturb my settings and uh, make things sound bad. So I really hope that this tutorial sounds clean, crisp, and uh, that my, my meter for volume works because um, I would hate <laughs> for the uh, the the gremlin laughter to uh, be a little too much. That's the reason I have the limiters in place in the first place, but uh, they can't very well work if they're not working. It's the wonderful thing though, like it's the same thing with art. Um, streaming isn't always perfect either. There's bumps, there's learning curves, and Sometimes there are periods where it's not really going how you think it should or wish it would. 
but if you're not doing it wrong and you're not struggling, then you're not learning and you're not trying new things. So, you know, just remember if you're like hitting a period where you're just having a rough time, sometimes it means you're just growing. And if you keep at it, you can get there. Just gotta be patient and persistent. Look at him. Our patience and our persistence today paid off. We got a, <laughs> we got a fun little guy coming together here. Is he perfect? No, but do I love him? Yes. I've only seen him for not even five minutes. And if anything happens to him, um, words will happen. Look at it, look. Do I wanna give it, no. They have like very beady eyes. We'll, we'll, we'll mess with it more. <laughs> but he's fun. All right, let's give him some of his little, his, the chunky little forearms are one of my favorite shapes that they have along with the wonky like Dorito cheeks. I don't know. These guys have such fun shapes. <laughs> Ranger Rick magazines. Um, all right. He doesn't have a neck. I don't think the raccoons really have necks. They just go from head to, to shoulders. <laughs> all right. So we've got hand. Oh man, how good are the lazy hands gonna be today? We'll see. We're putting claws on the ends of them. Anytime a uh, finger ends with a claw, the success rate of it looking good goes up by at least 90%. Why? Mm -hmm. It's statistical at this point. I've drawn enough fucking fingers that for some reason, if I draw claws at the end, they, they have odds of looking better. Why? I, I don't know, I guess claws make everything better. Or there's something easier for my brain to comprehend about the shape, I don't know. But it's a real phenomenon. So we drew, we drew claws, they're at least passable hands, considering I've barely drawn, uh, oops, that's, why so blue? I've barely drawn in the last week and a half because I've been trying to let my wrist rest. Um, that, that's passable hands. I will take this. This is not, not to be complained about. All right. Is he the best one ever? No. Do I wish I drew something better for an example on stream? Yeah, but you know what? If I drew like the best thing ever also, I feel like there's a thing where when people are starting out drawing, um, when artists are just really, really good. It's really f intimidating. Yeah, you're learning from them. They're showing you how to do something, but the example that they're giving is also at a magnitude that's hard to compare yourself to. Um, and then people who are newer may not have the skill sets to explain uh, the comprehension and like how to break down stuff because they're still trying to learn themselves. So I don't really mind that I don't feel like this is the top of my game or the best thing that I could have drawn ever because it fits the demonstration. It showed you that by learning how to break down the shapes and what makes the little guy the little guy um, that I have learned how to at least draw something that looks like one. And this is the seventh time. This is only time number seven that I have drawn a raccoon. So it's not like I'm gonna be um, an expert or overly amazing at it. So this is a realistic glimpse of what you can expect when you're just trying to first tackle and study something better. If I weren't trying to split my attention talking to the stream, it might be a bit better as well. Um, just because I would be able to fully focus on studying, uh, and how the shapes break down. But I've fully shared with you the process of how I go through it. 
Um, so if you were to take whatever animal you wanted to learn, you could continue to go through this as well. Um, it seems to me that they're very, um, very angular. Uh, and that's what I feel like I took away from uh, this is that their eyes are lower on their face than I would think. Um, and that, look, I even did it with him. Wait, can I make his eyes smaller? <laughs> Let's do, Let's apply my knowledge. See if it makes it better or worse. I think that made it better. I don't know. Maybe it made it worse. That's more cartoony. And I don't know. Art, art is subjective. Maybe you like one better than the other. For right now, it doesn't really matter because like I said, we've, we've covered the important part, which is how you can do it yourself or apply this to other things that you would like to break down and learn. And we'll continue, I'll do more of these. Um, so if this was helpful, please uh, like the video. And it tells me that this is something that you found useful and that I should do more of these. And if you want to follow for the streams and you're not already subscribed, maybe, you know, think about it. You can uh, get a notification for when I come on and, and draw animals and laugh like a laugh like an animal myself and go gremlin mode with me. I like to just I, today we did a to, 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 hmm. try again. Today we did a tutorial. Um, but sometimes it's a work stream and when I get my backlog down, we'll have a lot of cool fun stuff that uh, I'll be free to explore. Uh, but in the meantime, we're uh, rooting for my wrist to get better, so. Uh, and I don't know. If I am if I keep making streams week after week, should I save my Commission Nightmares video? Or do you want me to try to post it anyways so you don't have to wait? Oh, look, he's so cute. All right. Um... I'm gonna do one more layer where he's got like the little, they've got some muzzle coloration and that kind of goes across the top of their head. I love that they have like this weird, they're so floofy that they have like this weird, um, I, I don't know how to explain the, the silhouette. It's just fluff. Well, he's not quite fluff. Maybe, maybe partially fluff. And it, I, I, I wish I had drawn a cartoony raccoon to start out, but I don't know that I would have known what to do. I don't think I've really drawn these guys before. So this was a really fun uh, suggestion and I am always glad to brush up my skills so we'll see about doing another one uh, I think we got possums and a few other things on the list uh, so next week I'll be back with one of those or possibly uh, back with a work stream if my wrist can handle the demand uh, and I look forward to seeing you there so I think that that's gonna conclude the stream for today uh, if you have any suggestions for how this could be more helpful or more fun, this was very much kind of a prototype on doing this little breakdown, but I want to keep doing multiple animal studies and uh, maybe make this a little thing just because it's fun. And uh, we'll, we'll start off with the suggestions from the community post and see how that goes. But if you, if you want to leave a comment or remind me, uh, if there's something you want to see, I'd love to incorporate it. I want to make this as educational and as useful as possible. So, uh, yeah, if uh, all you did is hang out and chill in my stream, I appreciate it so much. It means the world to me. Um, if you want to uh, support the channel and give me more time 
to make videos, you can drop me a coffee or I think I'm going to be setting up a Patreon here. And I'll have that link going in uh, the description soon enough. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, um, just watching my streams, it means the world to me and it's a ton of support. You have no idea. It is amazing that I get to get on and share my art with you and try to teach what I've learned to anyone aspiring to learn themselves because I think art is amazing. It's relaxing when you don't get too stressed out about making it perfect and you just can enjoy it. It's, uh, it's beneficial and it's nice. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you for one year of YouTube. I am really proud of that. And I want to thank once again from the bottom of my heart, everyone who's been here from the beginning and everyone who's joined along the way. I, I, I'm just floored uh, by the support and I, I love what I do. So thanks for being a part of it. I'm going to stop gushing now. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to put my wrist on some heat, but I will see you next time for some more uh, art adventures and shenanigans. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>